Welcome to Across Africa, our weekly roundup of stories from across the continent. I'm Georgia Calvin Smith, and coming up, a scrabble to find foreign currency has hit Central African countries who use the CFA franc hard. We look at the economic turmoil the crisis has caused in Cameroon. Also, hundreds of thousands of migrants in Libya are hoping to make the dangerous journey over the Mediterranean into Europe. But many are sold into sex and service. We hear the harrowing story of one Ivorian girl forced into slavery by smugglers. And the British-born South African pop star Johnny Clegg has passed away. Known as the White Zulu, his music and band defied the racial segregation of apartheid and called out the injustices of white majority rule. And we'll start there. He was known as the White Zulu, South African Johnny Clegg, who passed away aged 66 in Johannesburg on Tuesday. He'd been battling pancreatic cancer for several years. Clegg shot to international fame for defying apartheid and playing in multiracial bands during white majority rule. His hits drew on Zulu and black South African culture and confronted some of the injustices of apartheid. Johnny Clegg was nicknamed the White Zulu. He defied the apartheid's racist laws by playing music with black South Africans and singing in local languages. He was arrested several times. Johnny Clegg became famous abroad, especially in France, before becoming a star in his own country. His most celebrated song, Asim Bonanga, was dedicated to Nelson Mandela. It was the first song written with Mandela's name uh, and released in South Africa because you couldn't, you were not allowed to use his name. Here he is seen singing Asim Bonanga alongside Nelson Mandela in 2004. Mandela spent 27 years in jail for his struggle against the racist apartheid system. Johnny Clegg was born in Britain to a British father and a Zimbabwean mother. He came to South Africa when he was seven. When he was a teenager, he would secretly go and listen to black musicians. He said that initially he didn't do this for political reasons, but simply because he loved Zulu music. Johnny Clegg sold more than five million albums. He died of cancer at his home in Johannesburg on Tuesday, aged 66. France 24's colleagues at Info Migrants have spoken to a young Ivorian girl about the horrors that she faced when she was sold into sexual slavery in Libya. At the time, she was travelling with her six-year-old sister, hoping, like an estimated 800,000 other migrants in Libya, to somehow make the crossing across the Mediterranean and get into Europe. Instead, Mariam was horrifically betrayed and abused. She hasn't had her period. She was wondering if she was expecting a child and doesn't want to tell him. She's afraid he'll hit her. Or worse. Or worse, kill her. She can't do anything. She can't ask for anything. She can't ask for a test. And you asked her if he's the father? There's not another man? No, she's sure it's him. Basically, he's kidnapping her. And afterwards, he'll sell her to a smuggler? The question is, is the goal to sell her afterwards? According to her, he really wants her to cross the sea so he can buy another girl. Almost every day, he summons me to his room and forces me to have sex with him. Sometimes he hits me on the face or on the stomach. When I don't want him to touch me, he hits me. I'm afraid to die. 
At the beginning, he asks for money to free me, but since I have nothing, he abuses me. He says he will kill me if I don't sleep with him. I never know what time he will come in, but when I hear the key, I'm scared. He does things to me. I don't want to talk about it. It disgusts me. I come from a small village in the Ivory Coast. For several months, I've been locked up in a man's house in Tripoli, Libya. It's a fairly residential area. The door is locked. I don't know his name. I call him the Monsieur. He's about 40. He's not married. He lives alone. Me, I'm nearly 17. The Monsieur has told me to stay quiet. He says if I try to run away, he will kill my little sister. My six-year-old sister is with me. He doesn't touch her. He's promised not to. I don't know if she understands what's going on. She doesn't talk much anymore. Do you think it's bad that she stopped talking? A collapse in foreign exchange reserves in Central African countries have left them struggling from a lack of foreign currency. Businesses and individuals in the six countries that use the CFA franc have been hit hard by the shortage. Our correspondent sent us this report from Cameroon. A black market in the heart of Yaoundé. Scores of currency traders are on the lookout for clients wanting foreign money. Most want euros or dollars. $20,000, this trader who wants to stay anonymous says it is hard to get his hands on such a huge sum. Normally, he trades the franc CFA for foreign bills. But over the past couple of weeks, there have been limited euros and dollars in circulation on the black market. Most of our clients now want to buy foreign currency. They want euros and dollars. There is a slight increase, just like every other scarce product. The scarcity has led to hikes of up to 15% and 20% for some of the scarce currencies. Officially, it is too soon to talk of devaluation. But on the black market, traders already talk of devaluation of the franc CFA used by six Central African countries. The refurbishment of this hotel is almost at a standstill. The owner's bank does not have enough currency to make international transfers to her material suppliers abroad. There is no foreign currency. I will show you some of our money transfer orders I signed at my bank three months ago. The supplies are still to be paid. Cameroonians have completely lost credibility internationally. This situation may cripple the economy, according to Cameroonian employers, who suggest that some non-urgent imports be halted. This would limit the exit of currencies. These restrictions only add to those already put in place by the central bank. A new foreign exchange regulation came into force in March to better control foreign currency leakage in the Central African Monetary Zone. The central bank says that maybe they have been a little too lax over the last couple of years. Now they plan to apply the rules rigorously, in such a way that it will be increasingly difficult to fraudulently send out foreign currency. They will reduce the activity as much as possible. And at this point, there may be tensions in the supply and demand for foreign currency. The currency crisis is foiling an even more vicious cycle, driving up prices on the black market. This comes 25 years after the trauma of 1994, when the currency lost 50% of its value overnight. Burkina Barbies are the must-have playthings in Ouagadougou. Toy makers in the capital are ramping up production of a doll that they hope reflect local children better than European models do. The African dolls have been a success with kids, but insecurity in the country has hit sales. Kina Faso. A new look doll is hitting the shops. Challenging the typical blue eyed Barbies, these dolls are designed to resonate more with the local population. I see these beautiful dolls. Normally, we always see European dolls. It's the first time I'm seeing something like this here, and I'm happy. I want to buy some for my friends. The dolls are locally made by Africans for Africans. All the dolls are made from African materials. We're trying to get a lot of people engaged with these dolls, to buy things that are 100% from here. In her Wagadougou workshop, 
Abibu crafts the dolls with the help of six employees. She believes that the African dolls could go on to reach the same levels of success as more well-known models. An African Barbie doll, why not? We need something like that. We still like white Barbies, but when the doll looks like this, there's a greater resemblance. You can dress them like yourself, style the hair like your own, with curly hair, you're immediately more connected with it. For a long while, the business was going from strength to strength. But recently, sales have slowed down owing to the uncertain security situation in Burkina Faso. The threat of jihadist terror attacks has kept away both the tourists and the wholesale buyers that represented a large part of their market. But Abibu hopes business will pick up again soon and she'll be able to supply more African children with those that they can identify with. Well, that's it for Across Africa for now. Thanks for joining us. Do so again. Take care.